On the last webinar, Gary had a great question. He said, Mike, okay, I haven't been to the doctor in 20 years. What other tests should I be doing after I look at my Chem24, CBC, and vitamin D and hormones and do all that? Uh, he was really motivated to, you know, sort of get a, a good understanding of his health. And and he said he's 50, again, hasn't been to the doctor in a long time. So what should he be doing? So there are a few things that I recommended. You know, we just talked about the ApoE4 genotype. Another thing to consider is your omega-3 index. Now, this is a little bit more important for men and postmenopausal women because after women go through menopause, their risk of heart disease is dramatically increased due to the changes in hormones. And the omega-3 index is a pretty interesting test. We've had Bill Harris on before, and I will link that below, that full episode. So the omega-3 index, just to be clear, is the amount of EPA and DHA in a red cell, red blood cell membrane. Hmm. Um, and we analyze it by separating out the red blood cells and then measuring, and measuring the fatty acids in the membrane. Because the, the red cell is, because it's a cell, uh, and has a membrane like every other cell in the body. It's a reflection of those other cells, but it's mm. easy to get to. Right. So you don't have to you know, biopsy, stuff. biopsy something. Yeah, right. So the EPA, DHA in the red cell expressed as a percent of the total fatty acids. So if there's 100 fatty acids, I mean, there's millions, but say there's 100 fatty acids in the membrane. And if, if uh, three of them are DHA and one of them is EPA, then you've got four out of 100, 4%. Hmm. That's your omega-3 index. Hmm. The typical American, again, 4 or 5%. Uh, typical Japanese, 9 10%. Um, Spain, they eat a lot of sardines. They get about 6% on average, six and a half, seven percent 7%. So it, it tracks with how much fish you eat, typical, uh, writ large. Mm -hmm. That's the population. Um, we think, based on a lot of evidence, that having an 8% omega-3 index, 8 to 12 approximately, up in that area, kind of Japanese levels, is really the target level for optimal cardiovascular health. An omega-3 index below 4%, uh, individuals that have that, they're at higher risk of having a more fatal heart attack should they have a heart attack. So it's called sudden cardiac death. The risk of sudden cardiac death is increased if individuals have a low omega-3 index. So you should strive to have your omega-3 index above 6%. Now, higher is not always better. You know, you don't want to have 35%, but if you can get into that 6 to 8% range, your risk of developing a fatal heart attack is actually a lot lower compared to individuals who have an omega-3 index that is around 4%. Now, what's unique about this test is it's really affordable and you can do this in the comfort of your own home. It's just like when you test your glucose at home, it's a little finger prick. And what they're going to do then is run that blood through their sophisticated machinery and they will quantify, and there's a cool, some cool features of this that we can talk about right now, but they quantify not only the percentage of the EPA and DHA, which are the omega-3 fats that are considered to be healthy in your red blood cell membranes, but they also look at palmitate. Now, this is quite interesting. You know, we've talked a lot about the, the sort of complications linked with elevated levels of triglycerides and elevated levels of fasting glucose and insulin and liver enzymes. When palmitate increases, that's a proxy that potentially there's this de novo lipogenesis occurring. And so it's essentially what that means is insulin is causing your liver to increase fatty acid synthesis, which can result in insulin resistance and fat gain. So when you see this in your omega-3 index, that is a marker that, you know, I need to focus on the exercise, the low carb, the intermittent fasting, because if palmitic acid is incorporating into your red blood cells, again, that is that is an indicator that this de novo lipogenesis is occurring due to insulin resistance. So keep that in mind. It's not just about your omega-3s. It's also looking for that palmitate. So this $49 test, maybe it's 59, it's in that ballpark can be helpful. And that can be this other thing, as Gary asked last night, what else can I do? So let's talk about what else can I do? Well, you could also do a DEXA scan to look at where your fat is being distributed. That will also give you insights into your bone mineral density. So as people age and they gain fat around the middle, not only does that cause uh, increased amount of fat buildup, but that can be linked with low levels of bone mineral density and muscle mass as well. So there's this kind of triad of osteosarcopenic obesity. And so what, what that means is you're losing bone mineral density, you're losing muscle, and you're getting fat at the same time. And that's not a good situation to be in. So this is where doing a DEXA scan to look at how much fat is around on your body and where is that fat being distributed 
Of course, you do not want the intra-abdominal fat, uh, fat around the viscera or the amental region. And the DEXA scan can be helpful there. What's unique about this is it's low cost. I think you can get a DEXA for about $100. And you know this is not something you do every week, right? You might do it once a year, once every two years, and you get a good idea about if your you know, therapeutic lifestyle change, your exercise and all that, how it's improving your body composition and your vital organs. Your muscle is a vital organ and your amount of fat is a reflection of your vitality and bone mineral density. So that's another thing you could do. And look, if cancer runs in your family, if you have a first degree relative that had a, a serious cancer um, or if you're a former smoker, you might consider a full body MRI once every five years, okay? So we've done some some videos before with the folks over at Prenovo up in Vancouver, British Columbia, and they now have uh, this, again, this is a more complex software that, that really enables for a, a better insight uh, into liver health, into potential tumors or neoplasms uh, in the brain, in the lungs, in the liver, uh, pancreas, in, in these organs where you don't want to develop cancer. So they're able to see that and it's non-invasive. And so for $2,500, if you're over the age of, of 50, 60, if cancer runs in the family, if you have reason to suspect that due to your choices that you made early in life that, that you can't take back now and you want to make sure to get out in front of it, you could you know travel to the Bay Area, San Jose, Pre Novo. I will link their information below to get a full DWI MRI. So you know I have family members who have had first degree relatives that passed away of pancreatic cancer. So I'm nudging them, hey, you know, you might want to go do this every every few years, you know, because you definitely want to get in front of pancreatic cancer, right? So those are some other things that you could do. Now, if cardiovascular disease uh, runs in the family, first degree relatives, you can consider a CIMT. So this is looking at the car carotid intimometer thickness. So how much atherosclerosis or stenosis in the carotid arteries is occurring. You could also do a coronary artery calcium score, a little bit more invasive than the CIMT because that's ultrasound to the best of my knowledge. So again, for heart disease related complications, for folks that have sleep apnea, iron overload, insulin resistance, and, you know, fit that high risk profile, you know, as Gary asks, what else can I do? That might be something to consider, but again, you don't need to spend a million dollars on all these things. This again, just you know, things to keep in mind over the next few years to sort of keep a, a better insight into. The last thing, if you can find a practitioner in your area that does the arterial pulse wave velocity test, and what's cool about this is it's non-invasive, and this is a way to see to measure non-invasively the elasticity of your, your vessels. And um, so essentially it puts, you know, it's this little really cool little device. I believe that technology came out of some some company just outside of Dallas, Texas, and they're able to, like it's, it's a pulse wave measurement. So if you think about your arteries, this is a very loose analogy, but your arteries are a hose. If you left a garden hose out in the, in the sun in Southern California for five years, it's gonna be really stiff and hard. You're not gonna be able to move it. That would be analogous to a, a sclerotic or a there's a lot of like arterial damage from high blood pressure and diabetes and all of that and a stiff artery you you don't want that so that you know that would be characteristic of inflammation and all of that so you want your arteries to be supple like a brand new hose and they're moving around and able to manage life stressors and all of that without having sheer stress well this pulse wave uh, arterial velocity test is something that can be uh can approximate this suppleness of your arteries so Again, not running out. I'm not suggesting you go out and do all these right away. I'm just, these are just things to put on your radar. Hopefully you found this a little bit helpful. There will be links to everything we talked about here. Again, just ideas to help you in your personalized lifestyle improvement as you go forward. So hopefully you found this helpful. We'll catch you on the next lesson. Yeah.